There's two moments that really define Jon Stewart as a character for me, and they happen on opposite ends of a story. First is when he's charged with blowing up an entire planet by accident. Three billion. That's how many were on that planet. He doesn't get defensive. He accepts his crimes, despite the protest of his friends. Nobody's lying. I did it. He did get bamboozled, by the way. The other moments is where he refuses to give in to his feelings for Shaira, even though he knows for sure their future together is inevitable. All because it wouldn't be fair for Vixen, and he doesn't want to be Destiny's puppet. I'm staying with Mari. Jon Stewart is a man of sheer principle to the point of self-inflicted pain, and that's because he measures himself through a very specific set of principles. Something, something, something What's the matter? I wore glasses as a kid. Every League member have very different motivations for their devotions to justice. For Batman, it's obviously a byproduct of his trauma. Whatever. Superman was taught to be loving by loving parents. I don't care where he came from. All I know is he needs us, Jonathan. Wonder Woman has a deep sense of personal responsibility for man's world. Wally is a really positive guy whose altruism and concern for other people is what helps him with his mental health. You play the fool to hide a warrior's pain. Jean does so to participate and protect his new home. And both Shaira and Jon Stewart has a soldier's code when it comes to abiding to institutional ideas of honor and service. I came to this planet as a patriot. However, there's another ingredient to Jon's brain hole, and that's his childhood love of comic book superheroes. They were the stars of my favorite comic book, the Justice Guild of America. What a nerd! He even credits them as the reason why he was selected to be a member of the Green Lantern Corps, and presumably why he joined the army. As a result, if you break Jon down with the self-concept theory, they are his ideal selves. We died once to save this earth, and we can do it again. The Justice Guild were World War II superheroes who were also soldiers that died in the war, and their nature is so altruistic that they bloody end their own existence with a smile to save everyone else from the fantasy that's keeping them alive. So you can draw a very clear line between their aspirational qualities when it comes to service and sacrifice with John's actions, and also his own lack of fear with death. He answered Jean's call, agrees to the Justice League invitation pretty confidently. During the Cadmus arc, he surrenders himself to the authorities of the rest of the League. There's a really great quote by Rowett's paper. It has been reported that a soldier whose self-esteem is high, or whose faith in his own worldview is strong, would have less fear of death than soldiers with low self-esteem. Moreover, it is probable that soldiers whose self-esteem is lowered are likely to show more fear of death. This would mean that self-esteem acts as a buffer against the fear of death. What, you think I'm gonna sit back and watch while you play martyr? I'll defend him! Jon Stewart's self-esteem is measured by his service to others, which is why he was in the Army, the Green Lantern Corps, and the Justice League. These organizations allows him to bring his ideal self and his self-image closer. So I'd argue Jon's self-image is of a soldier. This isn't right, we can't just sit here. We have to. Think of the others like us. We all need to be held accountable. We can't let that stop us from doing our job. We aren't here to be liked. We're here to make the world a safer place. But at the same time though, one thing that's really fun about DCAU's Jon Stewart is how under his soldier man exterior is also a big kid. You fly through space all the time, but sliding down a snowy hill makes you shriek like a child. Each winter, my grandmother would take me sledding in the park. It was the best part of Christmas. Mr. McGee? You're not in my history class anymore, John. It's stupid, really. Why should I feel like this? I mean, they weren't even real. They gave their lives for us. That's real enough for me. He's not just colleagues with the Justice League. They're his friends who stood up and believed in him even when he and the system didn't believe in himself. You believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. Hey, what are friends for? He's often paired with Wally because he's like his little brother. You done with those? He and Batman share conversations about the women in their lives, which comes off like two schoolboys. Standing right behind me, isn't she? John's romance with Shaira starts with bickering, but then they grow so comfortable and rely on each other so much that they open up and show each other how to enjoy Christmas. When they first kissed, John was like, yeah, let's be stupid. We can't be worrying about each other when we're fighting the bad guys. Too late for that. However, due to his ideal self as a soldier, he doesn't quite know how to process these feelings when it gets complicated. After Shaira betrays him, he compartmentalizes his feelings and shuts her out and becomes a pretty rude person. Anything I took was freely offered. Maybe you should take better care of your stuff. And when it came to voting, if she can leave or remain, he just couldn't. He stayed out of it. But when she left in tears, 
he said. I love you too. This tension between his childlike longingness to enjoy the things he wants in life and his duty, which requires shutting that part of him down. I have a day off and a fully charged power ring. Try me. Shockingly, it doesn't get resolved. Instead, it intensifies moving forward. He discovers they have a son together in the future. Your mother. Who is she? Kind of obvious, don't you think? They share a life together in a different lifetime. And also, the breakup with Shaira was so stressful that John loses all of his hair. John getting rid of the army cut and growing a stylish goatee I think symbolizes a new self-image, a new individualism, because moving into Justice League Unlimited, he's noticeably less stern. Sorry, been hanging out with Flash too much. After the heartbreak, he had to be someone new, someone different, beyond just the service. And as he experienced from the League... Got your back. Being a good friend is something also heroic. So he starts a relationship with Vixen, and there's two ways to interpret this. Either he really did move on, fell in love with someone else that's also sexy, reliable, charming, and crazy about him too. I was thinking we could skip the concert tonight, just stay in and order takeout. Or this is him expressing his feelings onto a substitute target, because first he was unable, then he became unwilling to express them to his actual target. Shaira. There's evidence for both. Vixen makes John happy. They both have chemistry. I'm not off shift until 1600 hours. That's breakfast time in China. I like breakfast. But, as Vixen said, He still has feelings for you, you know. I know. And Batman notices there's a part of him in denial. Also, John angrily defends Shaira publicly the moment she's attacked. Back off! She doesn't have to take that from you, people! The truth is, I don't think John knows. I couldn't figure out how to tell you this or... Even if I should. What? Throughout his entire life, he may have had the self-esteem to be brave and self-sacrificing as a soldier, but he's always had trouble valuing his own life with the same sense of responsibility. I did everything I could. I wish you had. He doesn't measure his worth through what makes him personally happy. As a result, when Shaira learns of their future son together, he responds by staying with Vixen in order to not be Destiny's puppet. I've been trying to figure out what to do with that knowledge, what it means for our future. Well, what else could it mean? I won't be Destiny's puppet. Whatever the future holds, we'll make those choices ourselves. This is either him still struggling to follow what he wants because of a sense of honor for others, because it'd be an unfair way to break up with Vixen, who's now hospitalized, or it could be the opposite. It's John deciding to follow his own free will by going against what's expected of him. We never got a conclusive answer, unless you count the Justice League Infinity comic, but after writing this video, I feel like his story isn't in any desperate need of one. As long as John surrounds himself with good people who loves him, as long as he's happy, we know he'll build the self-esteem needed to honor himself. That's the destiny, the promise, which Shaira represents. The point of this video is, go away Hal Jordan, John Stewart is my Green Lantern! So yeah, that was the Jon Stewart video. This video was of complete pain in the ass to do because I had written the first half of it down and I was pretty happy with it, the self-concept stuff. But then the moment I entered into jail use territory and had to talk about Vixen and stuff, I was like, I don't know where to go with this, where to start, because I wanted to continue the self-concept theory stuff. But then I was like, oh, this is a completely different thing. I, I don't even... I, 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 I. So this video ended up taking way longer than intended. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with it. It's designed to sort of be a complementary piece to the Hot Girl video and is a first part of a lot of other character case studies. I really want to get into the Young Just Justice characters soon, um, but I need to finish Young Justice Phantoms, but whatever. Anyways, special thanks to everyone on Patreon, I love you guys, and I'll uh, see you guys soon. Gotham City.